<laughs> Slightly late and we are live. Aloha and how you doing? Welcome to Hibachi Talk. I'm not sure you remember me, but I'm Gordo the Texar. I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Aloha everybody. And we're here with our guest today, Kevin House, Chief Operating Officer for IBIS Networks. That's right. We're Welcome good. brother. Thank you. Welcome yeah. aboard. Thanks Thank for you. coming out. Long term, long, to first time I've met you, so it's very nice to see you. Nice long term you. friend of uh, Andrew, there are um, uh, tech guys and marathon guys and <laughs> startup guys and then there's guys like Kevin that do all of that. Yeah. See, look how look how That's white right. I am. Pale. You guys are tan. It's like how do I blend my tech business and do marathons all day long? Yeah, stop flying around. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Stop spending There are your, marathon travelers. There are stop spending. Yeah, and it's been Welcome fun. back, Gordon. I'm glad not to have an empty studio. It's been nice. Check these out. I got University of Hawaii football helmet. I saw that. Got the University of Hawaii uh, football. You know what? So it's been You're fun. You're a bona fide fan. I'm a <laughs> I am a bona fide fan. It's been fun. I mean, I you know nine, nine over nine thousand miles. So imagine I did nine thousand miles, and you got all these kids doing nine thousand miles. So traveling all around you know the world, essentially yeah. half the world. Um, uh, we did a live show from from yep. an, ANZ Stadium. We did or ANZ Stadium, as they yep. would say in Australia. Okay. So and it was fun, and then we did the Mi Michigan show. So that yep. was great. Yeah, we so, had John. It was fun to have you skyped in. Uh, interesting episodes. And speaking of episodes, Kevin, uh, Ibis Networks has been on a fellow broadcast here. Right, you right. might have catch, caught him on Stan show, The Energy Man. So uh, right. we'll talk a little bit about energy today. I'm more interested in today's episode of talking about how you manage, you know, to build a company like that, which is a little beyond the startup stage, but still a startup Absolutely. from a tech perspective. Right. Sure. And then also, man, you know, uh, Kevin's an Ironman training for uh, Kona. He's right. done a couple other this year already. That's coming so up. How do you put all that up. all that work together yeah. in one package? You know, and, and, and manage to be effective. And so it's a it's a tough. The short challenge. answer is you don't sleep. You don't yeah, sleep. So he, he doesn't. He yes. doesn't sleep. Yeah. Sleep is a misnomer. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So yeah. where did you grow up? Where did you go to school? Um, what's your background? Sure, my background. Uh, I grew up in Texas, of all places. My uh, exes are in Texas. There you exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, saw a family there and uh, went to school at Vanderbilt University oh. out in Tennessee. So um, had a you know survived a, a few rough football seasons there. <laughs> our, Welcome our, to our night there. Exactly. We uh, felt our role was to uh, make the other SEC teams have good hunting homecoming games. You know, look, look <laughs> you're passed uh, around the league. <laughs> exactly. SEC's tough, man. Yeah, it's a tough league, no doubt. So, and then uh, was in the Navy for a little bit. Uh, went to school in a ROTC scholarship, so did, drove boats for a little bit, and then ended up in the uh, the tech business in California. Uh, digital media mostly, but uh, also got involved with a few other startups doing some really interesting things around gaming and uh, other types of uh, digital media. And uh, then been in Hawaii for about five years now and been, you know, focused for a good chunk of that on building IBIS Networks. IBIS Networks. Now, now, what would ever make you decide to come to Hawaii, the tech um, capital of the country, <laughs> exactly. the, the most uh, pr predominant business entrepreneurial uh, advocate government that's, in the entire country. Why would you come when here? When people think startups, they immediately go to Honolulu. Yes, that's right. Because that's, that's they never want to get out of that phase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, startup Honolulu, not. not. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, at the same time, uh, it actually is a really rich uh, bed of thinking in startups when it comes to clean energy. Right. You know, given the cost of energy and some of the obviously natural resources around Hawaii, it's, it's a great place to be doing a startup in the energy business. So even though it, you don't think of it from a software, from a Facebook or an Uber or other types of kind of these unicorns, right. uh, it's a great place to, to kind of prove out energy savings. and. Uh, also works out well that uh, anything that is related to the military is another good, good place to base. So, so it's, a, it's an interesting thought. So you come to the place that has the most expensive electricity, <laughs> and, then you, and then to you're going to come in here with a Smart. product that will make it even will make it less make expensive, it less expensive. And That's why not right. come to the most expensive place in the country? Yeah, no, not a really bad good. idea. We should get teachers to come here with the worst education <laughs> system in the country, so we can figure out how to get the That's education system idea. up. So the, uh, be cool. There you yeah, go. So they, and these guys came out. It was Ocean that helped work on this it's, technology. It's so it's some Hawaii-born or it is. Sure. Technology okay. is uh, was originally developed by Oceanit uh, as as part of a contract for the military. Okay. Funny enough, okay. uh, they're interested in understanding what all this equipment's using. They had no sure. idea, as most companies don't. I right. uh, have a clue of how much energy all of the copiers, printers, and stuff they plug in is using. 
And so they developed this for the military. They said, you know, this has got some really good legs. I think businesses might be interested in saving money as well. Mm -hmm. So they spun us out uh, about three years ago, a little over three years ago now. Uh, we raised some money. Uh, we kind of took the proof of concept ideas from patents all the way through to commercial products. And now we've signed some large contracts. We're distributed uh, within a, a large uh, deal with Honeywell, which is really exciting oh, uh, as cool. a key partner on the mainland for us. And, uh, and we've got some partners in Hawaii through that contract. And so we're, we're making, you know, progress. And mm -hmm. say, I think we're still a startup, but we're, we're really beyond the kind of concept stage. Yeah, and you have some good, like, thousand node projects going on. Is that correct? Absolutely. Or, yeah, I thought yeah. so. Absolutely. But I still don't know what the product does. It's a, well, well, uh, well see, you, you didn't read the literature. <laughs> <laughs> but our viewers don't know either because we didn't publish the literature. <laughs> there you go. We do what's called plug load management. So all of the various stuff that gets plugged in around an office building, okay. uh, we use this little sensor and essentially Internet of Things principles to okay. be able to monitor how much energy all of that equipment is using through these as well as control it. We can turn the power on and off uh, oh. remotely based on algorithms, based on schedules, and based on other types of triggers so that, you know, an office being empty literally two-thirds of the time, right. nights and weekends, all those copiers and water coolers and all these things the stay The printers, off. all that stuff that's sitting out there. Exactly. So we can turn those off uh, at 5.30, 6 p.m., whatever makes sense, turn it back on in the morning, and that's 12, 13 hours a night that all of that equipment is not, you know, sucking that sucking energy. Power. Juice. That's and, not bad. And what really caught my eye, so when I first... Uh, saw this the first and foremost because we, we bang on this a lot right on the, their page you can download the security profile for this device the okay. cyber security profile okay it's highly hardened okay so, so this has been I, thought of and it's I mean that they, they publicize it right there they give you all the parameters and all the things that it's using to uh, that's right ensure it's sort of give you that cyber assurance that you're looking for that all the, most of the like IOT device out there right. don't have this is a uh, well-made, well-thought-out device. Yeah, this is really developed for, for commercial applications, yes. and, and as such, the, kind of the key differentiating factors of what you get here versus like a Home Depot version or, or yep. whatnot is, is security, is scalability, and flexibility. You know, we deal with all sorts of kind of, you know, from the smallest, uh, you know, chargers up to some of the bigger copiers. We can do 240 volt up to 20 amps. So mm -hmm. I handle all of that in the same system. And we can integrate with building management systems as needed. So as you know, kind of, you have to think buildings just like security in a very holistic manner. It's not a point solution. Yeah. And so we want to make sure that we're approaching it that way. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. Very well done. I mean, so, it's, it's just rare to come across a product I, like I'm, this. I'm interested in this from just a uh, residential standpoint. I've got a number of things that I have in, in my home and that I'd like to you be able to control. You want to bring control. those up now? Or? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm trying to be secure. You, right. you talk, I don't say what I have. Yeah. You know, things I, I like to well, turn off. It's not at a, a security time. device. But I mean, it has no, no, no. no but, but it has security built in. And if I can, if I can, if I can um, hang certain pieces of equipment off of this and mm. turn them off at certain periods of time, that's right. And no longer need to worry about it. Yeah. And then um, now, can I program it to turn it back on at a certain period of time? Oh, of course, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, wow. And and you can do all of that uh, from any browser-based equipment. So any laptop, any phone any type of device, you can go in and manage it, as well as get real-time data of exactly how much all of this, these equipment are using. So if you've got an you know, old refrigerator, you can understand right. exactly what that's costing to run. And so... Well, and I'm just thinking of... We were talking about that before. Some of them are like $500 a, a year. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you know, to surprised. run an old fridge well, versus you get a new one, it'll run for like... 50, 60. A third of that. Uh, you know right, right. Well, I'm thinking of my wine coolers, right? So what, my wine coolers oh, yeah, don't need noisy. to be on at night, right? Because sure. it's cold. It's colder at night. Oh, you so, mean in Camuela? Yeah. Oh, so I, I could I could just have the have the wine coolers go off, you know, shut off at night. Mm -hmm. You know, I can just you know, instead of those little dial things, I got to worry about. And if you have a power outage, then it gets all messed up. That's exactly right. It doesn't have the you know because oh. it's got the timings all screwed up. So I you know that's that happens all. Camuela. Helco, one of our prime um, uh, power supply companies, <laughs> but you know, I got something like this will certainly help me control all of that. Plus, plus I give you one more benefit, and then we go on to more fun topics. But okay. you can also, because you can see real time data on it, if that fridge were to fail. You know, maybe early morning, you right. would know right away and maybe could do something about it if before you all your wine on. spoils in the middle of the hot day. So here's a question: Can I can I um, um, tell this to shut off? 
Of course. Can I go? So, yeah. so, so another issue I'm having is a certain server I want to shut down in a certain period of time. I could just have it plugged into this and tell it to turn it off. Yep. Absolutely. Tell it to reboot that server. Tell it to reboot it. Uh, we've got, now, uh, that would be cool. We've got one. How many one, guys yeah, you got to send? Remote, remote power. power yeah. Remote power, remote power and go manager. in there. Yeah, yeah. How many guys you got to send to drive down to, got to go down to this vendor. To hit or the, not, on, no, the this OE and Plug it for 30 <laughs> seconds. Plug and plug it back, it back in. in. But I could go in and I could just. You could remotely do that. Oh, now that is cool. That's that is a nifty, nifty thing. I can buy these online today. You give uh, me a I'll discount? I'll you up. <laughs> there you go. You're going to give me we'll, a discount. Okay, we'll see how the rest of the show goes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, after this show, you're going to hold, hold, hold on to your socks because the, the orders are going to come screaming. I was, I it's, 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 it. They're primarily commercially targeted because of the amount of power right. consumption in the commercial and government space is so high. Residential, right. we sort of touched the on The ROI is a little tougher. Yeah, a little and, harder in a home. Uh, these, these are really kind of more for the, kind of the commercial business where you can go in and deploy thousands of these. But, right. you, you know... You know, homes tend to, you know, there are fewer things, believe it or not, that you want to actually turn off automatically. A lot of these things that you want to leave on or your washer, your dryer, right. they're on or they're off. As right, to that's, that's not too bad. But there, yeah. again, there's things like refrigerators, mm -hmm. uh, air conditioners, dehumidifiers, sure. all of those kinds of computers. Mm -hmm. well, those, most those of that, and most of that sucking some power even when it's in yeah. its off state or it all, hibernate it all or does. what it all, yeah, it all, it's all it's drains. Yeah. Load that's why when you've got an sometimes. office of a thousand well, people and they all got their stuff sitting there, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm thinking I got one of these, I oh. plug, I <laughs> yeah. plug a power strip, strip on it, plug it. 35 devices into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. The, there, there you go. They're going to have the whole way. house uh, remotely controllable <laughs> on off. Yeah, right. Oh, house is power off. strip. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of technology, we have this segment colleague who's got, you know, got one tech job. So I've been traveling around and so on. And so I found this one, um, this, this guy, he's got the best no tech job in the entire country. So check, you look at it closely. He's on the other side of the fence. He's having a nap on his horse. You know, got one tech job. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Now, I don't know if he's retired, or maybe he's had one or too many two tequilas. I'm not quite sure, but he's certainly... <laughs> that was he, in Australia? Uh, I'm, yeah, it could have been. Could have okay. been. Anyway, that was, you know, <laughs> got one tech good. job. I like that. Yeah. So anyway, um, believe it or not, it's break time. We'll take a We've break. We've gone through 15 pay some bills. minutes. We're going to pay some bills. And, and we're, here, we're here with um, a tech startup, um, IBIS Networks, right. with um, Kevin House, H-A-U-S-E. That's right. And we'll get your website and everything. Uh, in just a minute, but we're going to take a break and we'll get Angus and we'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna, host of Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I hope you join us over the next several weeks as we take a deep dive into biofuels in Hawaii and explore the alternative fuels supply chain necessary for the local and global transition towards transportation fuel sustainability. Join us as we have good conversations with our farmers, our producers, our conversion technologies, our investors, and our legislators as we try to achieve our transportation sustainability goals. See you soon. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on ThinkTech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for Ehana Kako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state, as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on Ehana Kako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Hey everybody, welcome back to Abachi Talk. It's Andrew, the security guy with a security minute for you here. Uh, I wanted to talk just a little bit about the H factor, the human factor. Uh, we've got a lot of technology rolling out out there. Uh, I know that you can help you harden up your uh, perimeters, but the H factor is still a big problem. There have been a lot of studies uh, linked lately. This other one from Forrester lately, just uh, uh, advent of just misuse of data by employees, right? Um, and so, um, We've got to continue to do the training. You've got to understand that they're, they're doing things that they didn't even mean to do that are causing you data loss. Um, sometimes they're just um, not aware of it, so ignorance is still a problem. That's another reason why training is so important. And um, unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of data now to also indicate that um, intentional harm uh, is out there. So, you know, if you're harboring technology or if you're, 
you're, you're uh, 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 keeping um, intellectual property and people have access to it inside your organization. You want to make sure, sort of like Richard Branson said, that you've got them trained well enough to leave, but that you keep them happy enough to stay. 61% um, of these people report that they're not happy with their current employer, and 59% of them admit that they've already taken intellectual property out of the company. So, Security Minute, people are your biggest problem. Don't forget that. Work on them. And we're going to have a I think, yeah, we got Angus in off the beach. We're going to have a note from him here in just a second. Hang on. Angus, how you doing, buddy? Welcome back. Drew, how you doing there, lad? Good, man. Good to it's see you. It's great to see you. Yeah. It's, it's been, been a it's long time. It's been a while. I've been traveling around the world, I, as you know. I saw you hanging out with Gordo. Yeah, hanging out with Gordo. I saw the Mays in Australia. Yeah. And I saw the Angus, I saw the Angus brothers in Canada. <laughs> I saw how they were. Yeah. McGullible and McForklift. You don't look, you don't look too corrupted <laughs> yeah, from I'm it all. Yeah, not too corrupted. But, you know, we had a few beers, a few beers. But anyway, <laughs> it's been kind of good. And speaking of employees leaving, I got a wee bit of sad news. Oh. ITT, you heard of those guys? Oh yeah. Oh, ITD, yeah. Technical Institute, they got to shut down. Wow. Fifty years, they've been doing ITT training for fifty years, and the government's going to shut them down. Mm. You know, mm. then they may be just to cause fun, but anyway, they're shutting these guys down after fifty years of doing technical training. They've done over forty thousand people have been trained. Wow. It's a lot. It's a a lot. A lot of training that's gone on. Maybe but you lost. know, the, the they're under investigation. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, so with that one happening today, and then the stock market went down almost 400 points today, and they're telling everybody to bail out of tech. I know what we're going to do. We'd be out of a job. Bail out of tech. What about Bitcoin? Are we all right there? Oh, Bitcoin's doing really well. I ain't going to tell you. you know, Bitcoin is, right. is on the upside. Keep, Yay, keep Bitcoin. Keep me alert there, brother. But don't buy Bitcoin. Don't, don't, don't listen to Bitcoin. <laughs> anyway, so that, that, that's what's happening on that side. And then I want to talk a wee bit about, you know, because you're a startup there, lad. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about this iPhone 7. What do you think now? Are you going to spend all that money on an iPhone 7? Uh, personally, no. I think it's marginal improvements. Uh, I'll, I'll wait for next year. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree. You know, what, what do you think there, Drew? You're going to drop $979 for the How much is it? $979 yeah. US dollars no, for the iPhone 7. I'm going to get my buddy Angus to get me one for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to hold your breath there, lad. You're going to hold your breath. So anyway, the iPhone 7 has got to come some pretty good things, though. It's splash-proof. So it means you can't sweat on it. So when you're running your your marathons, you can you know you can don't, don't wear it when you're sweating. Don't wear it, no, no. <laughs> you know, but you know when you're sweating on it, a little you, bit, you can be okay on that. That's a big improvement. If you if, if you feel that confident in it, <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of confidence. And it got the new camera and it you know. But guess what I like? No headphone oh. hookup. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're and going you're going the wireless. The last I checked, I thought Apple owned B. So oh. aren't they killing themselves? I, I think they're going Bluetooth to yeah. B, baby. Exactly. They're going to put an adapter in there anyway. So yeah, anyway, yeah, So they yeah. got that working. Anyway, that's what's happening on my gadget side. There's no way I'm going to spend that much money for it. Sure. Anyway, that's, that's me. That's me for today. Off to Arizona in a couple of weeks. But, you know, we got the Bulls playing this weekend. And yep. please, come out to the Bulls game. Man, we need these young men to see that we really support them. So remember, go Bulls! Yeah. And let your wing game free where you be. Thanks, Angus. <laughs> <laughs> Angus always, always sneaking in on us with something. So, nine hundred bucks, we'll get a new iPhone if you can do it. The rest of us here probably, we wait a year. What I do you think, think so. Jeff? Yeah, I think so. Okay, you're now, in charge. Yeah, I'm in charge. So, so I want to talk about this. I love, I love the technology. I love the growth. And obviously, I mean, you, uh, yeah. you're out there a lot working. We are. That takes Absolutely. that takes a bit of time. So. Tell us about how you fit in Ironman training, because I'm, I'm a little familiar with that. And uh, Yeah, you've done one? It gets up to about 30 hours a week just of Ironman training as the, it does. As before you start your final taper there. And it's a load, man. So how you've it, done a few this year be. already. I've done, I've, this will be my, my fourth and twelfth months. <laughs> And so a glutton yes. for punishment. I am a glutton for punishment. So Absolutely. how do you do it? Give us, give us an idea of your week. So I'm gonna talk us through it. So yeah, I think that the uh, it really comes down to time management. Sure. Uh, I mean, life does anyway. But especially trying to get in that many hours, essentially a part-time job, just training on top sure. of a full-time job. Uh, and with a startup, it's already got odd hours and a little bit of stress. But mm -hmm. it also works out well to be a good stress relief in that being able to, you know be tired at the end of the day, but then to go and go for a long run or a swim and being able to kind of burn some of that off and uh, 
but yeah, time management. So you're up early in the morning, sometimes kind of, you know, lunch workouts, evening workouts, and uh, of course, long weekends. Yeah. So Sneak it in wherever you can. So you what you do you can. train on? You try to do two events a day? Like, I think most guys will try to run and swim one day or bike and swim yeah, or whatever. Yeah, typically it's, it's two a days, uh, and either kind of morning, evening, or maybe lunch, evening, kind of depending on, mm -hmm. on what my schedule and other meetings look like. Sure, you fit like. that in and Hawaii style. You got to swim in Alamoana, hit the shower, and then go to a meeting. And it's been done before, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I did it plenty. Whoa. No doubt. So here's my question. Do you have a family? Uh, I'm married, but uh, just dogs, no kids. So. <laughs> well, dogs don't care when the you. Do the dogs, dogs don't, don't care, care when you come home late. That's the beauty of dogs. Well, it depends how long they've been. Now your missus <laughs> on the other side. Yeah, well, you know, maybe she's training too. Does she do the same? She used to actually. She, okay. uh, she, in fact, for when I first got into this, she decided if she wanted to see me again, she was going to have to go out and pick up the sport as well. <laughs> wow. So she did a few, and then. Uh, about, about a year and a half ago, came to me and said, you know what, I really don't like this. <laughs> I'm going to find a new hobby. And so she's got some different hobbies that, that she likes uh, that keep her busy. So she's not sitting at home alone. She's got, got her own hobbies that she keeps excited so about. So typically, how many hours a night do you sleep? You know, when you get into training this much, I actually still need to get a full eight hours yeah. just as recovery. And right. so I find, you know, you, there's not a lot of time to watch football. Uh, as an example, uh, so three hours. I, I do miss uh, a lot of uh, things that other people might do in the evenings, but that's okay. Um, you know, it's still worthwhile. So and, when uh, it's work-life balance, it's sort of like work Iron Man balance. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's Iron Man kidding. takes the rest no of kidding. life, really. You have to kind of give it that. I mean, you, you really a do. little bit of time, but... Uh, a lot, a lot of, most of your social life is who you're riding with. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're looking for people that are interesting because you ride for hours and hours. Five, six hour rides, hours, absolutely. And, you know, two, three hour runs are pretty common. And so if somebody's looking for a chat, North Shore this weekend will be out for yeah. you know five, and six hours. And so the rough water this weekend, this past weekend was crazy. Rough water on Monday was. It was a tough, tough course. Yeah. Uh, the, the current was a little stronger than most people expected, and. Literally, morning of, of the race, everybody's looking out saying, wow, this is low, you know, not many waves, not that rough. Expecting record times this, you know, today, and of course that didn't pan yeah, out was, so much. Not until you get in that water can you tell. I know. And I brutal for you, your coach swam well. She did. I happen to know his coach. She's a, an amazing swimmer. Right? She's a great swimmer, Ab yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and, and, you know, shout out to some of my other friends uh, that did, did well, you know, won their age groups uh, or podiumed. And, right on. Uh, had, had, had a good swim as well, but it was a tough day. So did you guys go out together as a group with some of the people you know, or did you just kind of each man for himself? No, you, you tend to go as a, as a little group. Yeah. Uh, obviously, in swimming, there's a huge benefit to being in a group and yeah, drafting. Draft a little, and yeah. so if you can find some people with similar strategy and, and speed, then you stick with them, and uh, that worked. That's certainly the strategy I took. Hold on to their well. feet. I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of the conversation when you're swimming. It's not like like. Uh, there's no whoa, conversation. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you doing? Whoa, whoa. They, they pull you for a while. They pull you for a while. Then you pull them for a while. The drafting's quite. Well, they bad. pulled out. Well, if like, you're like, selfish, you stay back the whole way. <laughs> yeah. Well, they that, pulled, that's they, I stay behind my wife. You know, like, <laughs> but they pulled out over 200 people. They did from that. Yeah, um, they did. They most, were struggling. most of them right right at the outset. Unfortunately, the current really built as the morning went on. Right. And the way they set the waves, they put the fastest people up to the the forward wave. Okay. And so we were just talking about that a minute ago. The people that are probably least prepared for a heavy current right. are catching the the meat of it. The worst. So, of the it. worst of it. So that would have been me. Wow. So they so they the the ones that were the slowest they put up front. No, they put in the back. Right. They okay, that makes sense. And then the, and then as it got later, they got yeah. nailed but, with but, it. But because yeah. the current was building through the day, right? It, it, unfortunately, they they got the worst of it. Yeah, and the pro, you know, the really fast guys might go in forty something minutes, right. close to fifty, but, whatever. Whereas absolutely. someone like me, hour and a half. So right. you know, it takes me even longer, and I'm in the water last when the current's worse. So so did they? How were the times out of the water? Then were they a lot slower? They were than, slower. They were much slower right. this year than, than normal. Uh, I think that the winter was 59 minutes. Normally they come somewhere in the kind of the high 40s for that particular swim. Wow, wow. 4,000 meters, long way. It's a long, it is, long it's, it's way. A it goes from Kaimana all the way down to, you know. The Hilton Wine Village. Hilton Wine Village. Yeah. Didn't one year they cancel it because Last of the, year. Was it last year? Okay, last year it was last year they canceled it. They canceled it, canceled it before in, in the past. But typically it's because, it's, you know, the, the waves are breaking and there's just too much. And it, it's obvious from the beach. It's the current in the undertow. You really can't tell until you're out in it. So, wow. and, and it so changes wow. quickly. And so for Ironman, that's just the first part of your day, 4,000 meters. And that's, you know, that's right. Colony, he'll be, they swim straight out of the harbor a mile, half turn around, come back, yeah. and 
Then you get on the bike and, and ride the hobby. Yeah, 112 miles and back. on the bike. And then, then you got to run out on the community highway. And, and, and you're all warmed up afternoon. for your marathon in the afternoon in the, and the lava fields. Absolutely. And what you don't want to be Man. doing is... <laughs> Good luck over there, brother. You don't want to be flying in and trying to rent a car during that period of time either because it's no, like no. It, no, the no, prices fact, are it's, outrageous. It, and it's probably not the best time to visit even from here because it's the, the whole town of Kona so gets focused and really can hyped up around around this race right. that everybody that's there on vacation just is having a miserable time. Yeah, it's, <laughs> but if, you're not, yes. if you're not supporting the Boza, we can go and support the Ironman. Yeah. It's really fun to watch them come in late. Uh, the late finishers like myself, I would be one of those at 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. And, yeah. you know, they're the not an easy day for those no, folks. No, you've done it before. You, I, you've well, not Kona, it. though. But, the uh, you know, you, me, I, I don't want to get off my bike till the sun's going down. So I, I'm not riding all that hard during the day. But, you know, when you get back and, you know, maybe you get, start running at 2 in the afternoon or something, the Queen K, it's... It's scorching over there to run down that highway and watch right. them. And it's, it's amazing right. to see the athletes get through there. Wow, it's That's pretty good. Incredible. Fun. Yes, October 8th. Yep. Oh, it's October 8th? October 8th. Okay, i got to make that note that on my... Yeah, I will so not... You, so I actually, be. <laughs> actually, I think UH is playing away then. So, so you're you gone. You won't I'll be, be at Camuela. the game. I'll be at the game. So that will not be me forcing my way back to come well on. Nice. So, anyway, um, you know, I lost my earphone, so I cannot hear what's going on. So I'm, I'm There's just going to wing. There's nothing. So you're, yeah. you're in charge. You're in charge. So work, so work like, what would you, what would you um, advise some, you know, aspiring uh, athletes or some, some aspiring Ironmen that want to get out there and work, and uh, they got worried about their job and all that kind of I, stuff. I, I think you know, my advice is really just about you know, pre-planning and time management. Uh, you can't just okay. wake up in the morning and say, gee, what am I going to do today? You've got to really understand what your workout plan is going to be for the week. Schedule meetings around it, schedule your work around it, um, but it's doable. It it's absolutely can be done. I've been doing uh, Ironmans for over 10 years now, and typically not four years, but um, yeah. it's, it's definitely, you know, and the other thing is just to manage, you know, your year as well, because as you kind of ramp towards, say, one big race in a year, you know, make sure that you've kind of set your other travel, your business operations around that, so mm. you've got a little bit more free time at that, that last kind of month or two as a build into it. Mm. Well, that's so a lot there you of time. go. It's all doable, gang. Work-life balance. It's we have it right here. You, you can do it. I mean, you're not sitting back eating bombs. You're not sitting back watching um, uh, whatever those useless TV shows are. Not down at Ferguson's now. having so, Guinness. No, not that. Any. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You do have to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's your carbohydrate it's load up. It's you know, a, so. your, your, your carbo loading. Yes, my carbo uh, but, loading. But it does make it tough to go to every away game in a season, though. <laughs> anyway, it's been great to have you on the show. Thank so, you. Uh, again, what's your website? Uh, it's www.ibisnetworks.com. I-B-I-S networks.com. Check it out. Save okay. some power for yeah. your company. What does IBIS stand for? IBIS is a bird, actually, but uh, the acronym that we based the name on was uh, Information Based Savings, IBS, and then we slotted an I in there, but uh, our logo is, is the IBIS is bird, bird, and absolutely. And yeah, so check this out. I mean, you know, from a commercial standpoint, check out your website. Yes, please. This may be something you could save a ton of money. And then use your savings Absolutely. to help fund Ibachi Talk. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, no guest goes without reward. Here you go. It's an um, uh, autographed solo cup. Well, thank you so very it's, much. It's yours. It's number 86, 86 in our series. Absolutely. So that, that's happening. And notice our new um, solo cups down here with, with the name of our crew right on it. So Zuri and Nick, thank you guys so much for helping us do it once again. And Jay. Then Jay. I'm going to get one for Jay. Yeah, I'll do I'll. I'll I found you some Michigan. I'll go back to Michigan and get more. <laughs> anyway, it's been great having you on the show. Thank you for having me. Welcome back, awesome. Gordo. Nice to be back. I will see you. Oh, yeah, we'll see you next week. That's right. So we'll see you next week. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining us here on Hibachi Talk. We'll see you again next week. Hello. Oh, uh, wait, wait. As we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. See, I'm out of practice. One, two, three. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs>